Hi, it's Jay. I'm back here again. Now I'm uh, going to, into the sequel of our introductory oil cooler core video. And we're going to take on a little task here of building an oil cooler on a car. In particular, this time I've got a little oil cooler design I've uh, done up in the computer for an Audi A4 of mine. And we're going to show you how it all goes together and gets installed in the right position with the right tools and the right practices. For this project, I wanted to use the 10 by 6 by 2 oil cooler core. From there, I took the set dimensions from the oil cooler core, plugged them into SolidWorks, made a rough model of what I wanted to see in the car, including a mounting bracket, and I took that model, flattened it out, sent it to a laser cutter, and they gave me back sheet metal templates for me to uh, bend and tack together to make the final assembly. One of the questions I get asked the most is what material and what thickness should I use for end tank designs on an intercooler or an oil cooler? Uh, that can vary a little bit, but in my case here, I'm using no less than 90 thou thickness aluminum, which is a 50-52 grade, uh, mainly because I've, well, I've chosen 50-52 is because I've got some bends in it, so it's not going to crack when I put it in the press brake. Uh, if the design that I came up with doesn't require bends, which is entirely possible, uh, you could use 60-61, so it is also another material that's easily obtainable. Uh, generally, I don't go thicker than material that's uh, 0.125 of an inch. And um, so let's, let's lay all this out, get in the press brake and mock it up. One other thing I wanted to touch on before we get into tacking all this together was the selection of fittings that we have available on our website to help you uh, plumb the oil cooler into your engine or diff or transmission. Um, in my particular case, I'm using a Dash 12 uh, male AN. It's not to say that that's the right one for you. If you have questions about your setup and you need some guidance, please give us a call or send us an email. We can help you out literally instantly. So these are my six templates that I've got for my end tanks. Um, so what I'm going to first do is mark on these long pieces here where I need to bend according to how they would contour to the side of the end tank. So we're going to basically try and mimic this shape as a side profile on this shape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this out roughly where I think the middle of each bend will be. So now you see I've made each of those three marks and I'll set them up in the press brake to go perpendicular to the sides to make sure we get a, a nice clean even fold on it. So I brought my, both of my pieces over to the press brake. I've got my marks here. I'm going to put them in the uh, larger finger of the brake here. And this is something you want to take your time at because if you do it too much, then it creates a little bit more work for yourself down the road. So I'm going to put this in here, get it all lined up with this square. Just make sure I get a nice square uh, break to the part or bend to the part that I'm making. And again, I'm only going to do, I know that I'm bending at the point for this profile edge here, or this point here. So I got maybe a 15 degree uh, break I've got to do. So I'm going to line this up. Take it out, check it. Oh, that looks pretty good. So now I'll do the process again for the next bend. So you can see there, I got a little bit more to do. Just That's good, I can definitely work with that. One thing I've done in my program or my SOLIDWORKS file is I've made my model have this groove between all of the seams. And this creates like a little uh, a valley for the weld to sit in. If you have uh, a template that has the edges too close together, or they're, they're flush, you don't get as nice of a weld or, or a nice as a, a good landing for the weld to sit in. So ultimately you want to have a V-groove for your weld path for when you're setting all this up. So now I just got to bend the, the bottom piece here. So I've got all, I got my seams very, very close together so that my weld will sit in a nice uh, V-groove throughout the weld path. One more thing we want to touch on before getting into finishing this oil cooler is the inlet and outlet position 
so that the core is always filled with oil. That's very important. It's not like an air-to-air -air intercooler where you know you can feed and exit the intercooler in any position and the air will disperse naturally throughout the core, or you would hope. Uh, but since oil is gravity sensitive, uh, you want to make sure that you fill the core with oil or as much oil as you can. So uh, a not so efficient design would be to have the entry at the top of the core and then the exit towards the bottom, uh, especially with a, a core width maybe this thick. What might happen in this case is that the oil would pass in or come in and then you might only fill say two thirds or a half of the core. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to try and fill this core up as much as I can with oil and get the most cooling I can out of it. I'm going to put the exit of the oil cooler on the top and I would have more, more oil passing through the full amount or the full uh, footprint of the core itself. I've brought all my items now over to the welding table to get them tacked together. I'm going to tack the end tanks to the core and then take it over to the car as an assembly and mock it up to make sure there's no dimensional errors or interferences with any other parts. I've got my welder set to about 130 amps. I might change that just to get the best pattern on the, on the end tanks. And we've got some 5052 material that we're welding with some 5356 welding rod. Let's get my gloves on and see how this goes together. So before I dig in, I'm gonna give you a quick overview of what my welding torch is. It's essentially a number nine torch, water cooled with a number eight nozzle. I've got a 332nd electrode and it's rated green. So I use green for everything I weld aluminum. Uh, even though I'm using an inverter welder, it still works really good for me. So let's get at it. I've got this uh, aluminum set up for about 110 on the frequency scale. So it seems to work really good with this combination for this particular type of uh, aluminum. So I've got my first end tank kind of tacked together. I'm just going to trim some uh, excess material off the ends and then tack it to the core. In quick, I've just come over now, I'm going to put this in the bracket we uh, bent up earlier. Just going to slide it into place, make sure it's fitting where I want. Looks pretty slick with that intercooler below it. I think we're good. One last thing before I jump in and do the final welding. Some of you may be wondering what is the uh, best sequence to weld all of these seams together. Uh, in this case, what I'm going to be doing is all the thin gauge material seams together at once, and then I'll do the core to the end tank uh, seam last. This gives me the least amount of start and stops uh, to be showing after the item is completed. So notice this is obviously much too high for seam welding the tanks. Take it down to about 100, 105. Now I'll just do the outside seams of the end tank to the core and then uh, select my, my fitting size. And we're done. A little tip I'll give for welding cores to tanks and, and things like that is where you've got a thick to thin material. You want to keep your weld puddle more on the thicker material so you don't heat soak the other thinner gauge material and warp it. It's always good to have a resting point for your elbow or forearm so that you don't get too shaky after welding apart like this because you will get tired. All right, now we've got this uh, welded up. I'm going to take the bracket off of the car, bring it over, position it around the, uh, the oil cooler, and then 
do a couple stitch welds on it and then it's pretty much done. Okay, so this is my last step before I can move on to something else in the car. I'm just gonna mount this up and then maybe get, uh, we can get some lines on it. That's it for now. Then I'll just, uh, I'll probably also get on to welding out this intercooler. Maybe that's another video we can do shortly. Stay tuned.